Techniques, the illustrious Hi-Fi brand positioned on the razor's edge of technology for generations one day vanished. What caused their epic rise to the top and whose fault was their turbulent fall and could they ever rise back up from the ashes? Here's what happened to Techniques. Techniques, a subsidiary of the Japanese giant Panasonic, was founded in 1965 by Matsushita Electric Industrial Co. From its inception, Techniques aimed to push the boundaries of audio fidelity, setting a new standard for sound reproduction. The brand's early products, including amplifiers and speakers, quickly gained recognition for their superior build quality and performance. The birth of Techniques marked a turning point in the audio industry. Matsushita recognized the growing demand for high quality audio equipment and decided to create a separate brand dedicated to catering audiophiles and music enthusiasts. Thus, Techniques was born and embarked on a journey to redefine what was possible in sound reproduction. In 1965, Techniques made its debut under National Panasonic as the Techniques One loudspeaker. The Techniques One loudspeaker was a sealed two-way speaker system with a power rating of 12 watts into 8 ohms. It proved to be a successful product and the early Triumph paved the way for Techniques to continue its journey of innovation and introduce more groundbreaking products. Just a year later in 1966, Panasonic unveiled the Techniques 28 a tube amplifier. This stunning amplifier boasted a powerful 80 watts per channel, an impressive feat for its time. It featured 20 pento tubes and utilized OTL circuitry, enhancing the overall performance and fidelity of the sound. To complement the Techniques 20A amplifier, Panasonic also introduced the Techniques 10A preamplifier the same year. The Techniques 10A preamplifier incorporated negative feedback circuitry, a revolutionary design element that reduced distortion and expanded the dynamic range, providing music enthusiasts with an unparalleled listening experience. The year 1968 marked a significant milestone as Panasonic decided to combine the Techniques 20A amplifier and the 10A preamplifier into a single integrated amplifier, leading to the birth of the Techniques 30A. The 30A was an improvement over its predecessor, the 10A, featuring lower distortion and an improved signal-to-noise ratio. It also introduced a newly designed RIAA circuit, elevating the fidelity of vinyl playback. In 1969, one year after the Techniques 30A, Panasonic unveiled the Techniques 50A, a solid state integrated amplifier that represented a departure from tube based technology. The 50A retained the timeless aesthetics of a classic Macintosh amplifier, complete with a green backlight and distinctive glass faceplate. This amplifier was a testament to Technique's commitment to both innovation and design, even though it kind of looked like a Macintosh. However, it was the product introduced one year later in 1970 that would become the catalyst for the company's trajectory over the next five decades decades. The 1970s were a defining era for music with rock and roll, disco, and the beginnings of electronic music taking the world by storm. For the discerning audiophile, it was also the age of high fidelity sound systems. At the center of this hi-fi revolution was Techniques, the audio brand introduced by National Panasonic. While the 1970s saw the rise of various audio equipment brands, few could match the innovation and craftsmanship of Techniques. In the realm of flagship products and innovations during the 1970s, Techniques stood out remarkably. The early part of the decade was marked by the release of the Techniques SP10 turntable, which was no ordinary record player. Representing a groundbreaking approach, it was the world's pioneering turntable to feature a direct drive motor. Its unmatched precision coupled with a robust performance resonated deeply with audiophiles worldwide. Further amplifying its appeal was its adaptability, with the brand offering a range of optional add-ons, from custom tone arms to elegant wood bases and protective dust covers. As with any brand pushing the boundaries, Techniques found its share of controversies. One notable incident was the skepticism surrounding this direct drive turntable technology. Traditionalists believed that the belt drive system was superior with its ability to absorb motor vibrations. However, Techniques innovation in direct drive mechanics eventually gained acceptance, proving that it could provide consistent speeds and reduced wear and tear. However, Techniques did not stop there. 
1972 heralded the introduction of the revered 10,000 series. Notable components of the series, like the SU-10,000 preamp and the SE-10,000 amplifier, became stalwarts in the brand's lineup, renowned for their superior sonic output. Not to mention those incredible 10,000 speakers that just look absolutely wild. The 1970s, a transformative era for music and audio technology, witnessed the introduction of a turntable that would go on to become legendary, the Techniques SL-1200. Launched in 1972 by the pioneering brand Techniques, the SL-1200 wasn't just another turntable, it was a master stroke in precision engineering and design. With its innovative direct drive mechanism, it offered unparalleled speed stability, reducing the common distortions experienced with belt drive systems. It rapidly garnered admiration not only from audiophiles for its impeccable sound fidelity, but also from DJs for its robust build and consistent performance. The SL1200's sleek design combined with features such as pitch control and a durable tone arm made it a feature in both home audio setups and the club scene. Its introduction marked a paradigm shift in the world of turntables, setting new standards and laying the groundwork for its continued legacy in the world of audio equipment. Techniques was not just about producing great products, they were also about breaking new ground in audio technology. And one of the significant innovations in the 1970s was the development of the Class A amplifier system, which delivered cleaner, more robust sounds, reducing distortions and setting new standards of audio clarity. As the decade progressed, 1977 emerged as another landmark year for techniques. This was the year the brand unveiled two of its masterpieces, the SUA2 preamplifier, celebrated for its all-stage Class A operation, and the SEA1 amplifier, an embodiment of powerful and intricate amplifier design, effortlessly delivering a staggering 350 watts per channel. In the days of the 1970s stereo wars, the Technics SA-1000 emerged not just as another contender, but as an unparalleled behemoth, casting a long, distinguished shadow across the audio landscape. With a staggering power output that dwarfed even its eminent siblings in the Technics SA series, such as the SA-600 and the SA-800, it was the SA-1000 that became the stuff of legends. This era witnessed the release of some of the most iconic receivers, with the Marantz 2600, the Sansui 9090, and the Pioneer SX1980, each carving their niche, presenting listeners with a symphony of unique features. However, the SA-1000 resonated on a different frequency. Its staggering 330 watts per channel showcased its unmatched prowess, creating soundscapes that seemed richer and more expansive, while the Marantz 2600 was celebrated for its elegance and the Sansui 9090 for its finesse, the SA-1000's extremely low harmonic distortion of 0.03% stood out, delivering clarity and precision that was unparalleled. Even the Pioneer SX1980, my favorite receiver, with its own revered clarity, seemed to play second fiddle to the impeccable engineering of the SA-1000. One thing was clear by the end of the decade, techniques won the Stereo Wars. Techniques solidified its legacy not merely with its famed turntables and receivers, but also with its meticulously crafted reel-to-reel -reel tape decks. Models like the RS-1500 and the RS-1700 became staples for serious audiophiles, lauded for their mechanical precision and sonic clarity. With gleaming brushed metal finishes and robust build quality, these machines were as much a visual statement as they were sonic masterpieces. Beyond the decks themselves, Techniques also introduced accessories that enhanced the reel-to-reel -reel experience. Their precision-engineered NAB hub adapters ensured tapes spun true and even, while the RP9110 dust cover protected these cherished machines from environmental wear and tear. For those desiring greater control from a distance, the RP9690 remote control became an indispensable tool. And for the traveling audiophile or the professional, the RP9100 road kit Case, which I literally just learned about, offered robust protection, ensuring their beloved reel-to-reels remained pristine even when on the move. For many, owning a Technique's reel-to-reel such as the iconic RS-1500 wasn't just about possessing a playback device, it was about holding a piece of audio artistry. And as the world transitioned into newer digital formats, the allure of the revered Technique's reel-to-reel masterpieces 
remained untarnished, echoing an era of unparalleled audio authenticity. The 1970s were undoubtedly a golden era for techniques. The relentless push for innovation combined with an unyielding commitment to quality set them apart. While the SL1200 turntable and the SA1000 receiver often steal the spotlight, it's essential to recognize the breadth of techniques contributions during this decade, laying the foundation for the brand's legendary status in the audio world. As the 1980s unveiled a blend of neon lights and sweeping cultural revolutions, the world of music and audio technology witness its own kind of renaissance. Between the rise of the compact disc, the Walkman, and the personal computer age, Techniques emerged as a brand that meddled innovation with artistry. The Techniques SL1200 series may have entered the 1980s with an unbeatable reputation, but it wasn't alone. Alongside it was the Techniques SL10, a direct drive turntable that was as sophisticated as it was compact. Renowned for its sleek design and horizontal playing capability, the SL10 further solidified Techniques' prowess in the turntable domain. Then, there was the upgraded SL1200 MK2, with its quartz-locked pitch slider, cementing its place in nightclubs, radio stations, and audiophile collections globally. The 1980s weren't just about vinyl though, they marked the dawn of the compact disc. And just as they had done with turntables, Techniques made their mark with CD players. Enter the Techniques SLP10, a representation of the brand's commitment to embracing the future. This CD player wasn't just about playing digital discs, it was about delivering exceptional audio quality, emphasizing Techniques expertise in both old and new formats. The Techniques SUV series Series amplifiers personified the audacious spirit of the 1980s. Units like the SUV6 and the SUV8 stood tall, but they were more than just powerhouses. They were symbols of audio precision with a clear and consistent output. They became essential for those who sought audio excellence. In a decade filled with innovations, Techniques wasn't just focusing on the source of the sound, but also on how it was delivered. Their SST1 speakers were a testament to this. With their unique design and emphasis on linear your phase technology, these speakers aim to offer sound that was not just heard, but felt, ensuring that music wasn't just a listening experience, but an immersive journey. Innovation was Technique's watchword of the 1980s. Computer controlled systems emerged, linear phase speaker systems evolved, and direct drive turntable technology reached new heights. Techniques was not just part of the 1980s audio revolution, they were often leading it. Yet, success is often accompanied by scrutiny. As Techniques forged ahead, debates arose. The sound quality of certain devices, including some CD players, became points of contention among purists. And with a broad product range, the brand faced its own identity challenges, constantly balancing between professional DJs and home-based audiophiles. As the final decade of the 20th century dawned, the audio landscape braced for seismic shifts. Digital technologies were no longer on the horizon, they were very much here, and their influence on audio was undeniable. Against this backdrop, Techniques Panasonic's venerated audio arm sought to blend its esteemed legacy with newfound innovations. During the 1990s, the Techniques SLPG series rose to prominence, emerging as a trusted line for CD playback. Two standout models from this range were the SLPG 440 and the SLPG 490. The 440 was admired for its reliability and ease of use, making it a favorite from those transitioning from vinyl to CD. Meanwhile, the 490, often deemed as a workhorse, was notable for its direct optical readout and mash one-bit conversion, offering listeners a detailed and dynamic sound signature. Together, these models help reinforce Technique's commitment to delivering quality digital audio experiences at an affordable price. The SUV series continued to be a dominant force in the 1990s, with models like the SUV 470 and the SUV 7, resonating particularly well among audiophiles. The 470, for instance, was lauded for its VC4 amplifier system, delivering a warm and rich sound. On the other hand, the V7 showcased a unique design and boasted a bevy of features that set it apart, reinforcing Technique's capability to blend aesthetics with functionality. Technique's commitment to vinyl was unwavering. Even in the digital-heavy 1990s, the decade saw the rise of the SL1200 MK3 and the 
specially crafted SL1200 MK4, a testament to the brand's enduring love for analog sound. As techniques strive to serve both analog and digital enthusiasts, they found themselves in a quandary. Products like the SLPS770 CD player and the Technique's SL1200 MK6 turntable were a prime example of this balancing act. The turn of the millennium saw a deluge of audio brands often offering competitive features at reduced prices. Technique's higher-end models like the SAGX530 and the SADA10 were often compared against more budget-friendly options for emerging brands, compelling techniques to defend their premium positioning. With the rise of devices like the iPod, there was a clear market shift towards portable audio solutions. Techniques historically known for its stationary audio systems responded with products like the Techniques SLXP505 portable CD player and matching headphones. These models were Techniques' nod to the on-the-go consumer. As the 21st century dawned, the music industry underwent seismic shifts. The 2000s were not just about new gadgets and gizmos, they represented a fundamental change in how people experienced and engaged with music. Music. Techniques rooted in a rich history of analog excellence found itself navigating these choppy waters of change. At the heart of this transformation was the digitalization of music. CDs had already marked the beginning of this shift in the late 20th century, but the 2000s accelerated it. File formats like the MP3 became household names, compressing music into easily shareable and downloadable units. This convenience, though a boon for many, posed challenges for brands like Techniques, which had championed in the full rich sound of analog formats. Platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, and Pandora began to dominate, changing not just how we listen to music, but also how we discovered it. The album culture where one would sit down and immerse oneself in an artist's vision from start to finish began to wane in favor of playlists and singles. For techniques, this meant rethinking product lines and functionalities, shifting focus from standalone players to integrated systems compatible with streaming technologies. While vinyl saw a nostalgic resurgence among aficionados, the broader market moved away from tangible music formats. Digital libraries and cloud storage made vast music collections portable and easily accessible. Techniques, with its legacy rooted in turntables and physical sound systems, had to innovate and diversify to stay relevant. As the 2000s drew to a close, a palpable melancholy descended upon the audio community. The horizon darkened for techniques. A brand that had for decades illuminated the world of high fidelity sound. In 2010, a somber announcement sent ripples across the globe. Techniques would cease the production of the revered SL1200 turntable series. To many, this wasn't just the end of a product line, it felt like the fading notes of a beloved symphony. The SL1200 with its iconic design and unparalleled performance had been the linchpin of countless musical memories from house parties to professional DJ setups. It was a testament to the brand's commitment to unmatched quality and its enduring bond with music lovers. Behind this heart-wrenching decision were mounting challenges. The brand, despite its storied legacy, grappled with adapting to a rapidly evolving market landscape. External pleasures from emerging technologies to fierce competition had taken their toll. But it wasn't just about market metrics. It was the end of an era, a chapter closing on a tapestry woven with passion, innovation, and dedication. As turntables spun their last records and Technique's logos dimmed in stores, the world mourned their loss. But deep within, fans held on to hope, whispering tales of possible resurgence, dreaming of a dawn when Techniques would rise again, reborn from its own legacy. It wouldn't be long after this that several factors would lead to Panasonic shutting down the Techniques brand in 2010. The 2010s saw a rise in the demand for portable audio solutions like Bluetooth speakers and headphones. Brands like Beats and Bose dominated this space, leaving traditional hi-fi companies grappling for relevance. The challenges Techniques face weren't just economical or technological, they were deeply emotional. The brand had cultivated a loyal following over the decades. For many, Techniques was not just a brand, it was an integral part of their musical journey. The thought of the legacy brand going under was a bitter pill 
pill for the audio community to swallow. Technique's struggles during the 2000s offer crucial lessons for both businesses and consumers. Brands must remain agile and adaptable, willing to evolve with changing market dynamics. At the same time, consumers play a vital role in shaping the fate of brands, underscoring the importance of supporting companies that resonate with their values and preferences. Now, 2014 brought with it whispers of nostalgia and anticipation in the audio community, culminating in the much awaited revelation, Techniques was making its grand return. This wasn't just a relaunch, it was a harmonious blend of Techniques' storied legacy with fresh innovations. Among the standout mentions were the SL1200G turntable revisiting the brand's iconic history and the SUG700 integrated amplifier, a symbol of its forward-thinking approach. By weaving the cherished sounds of analog with the precision of modern digital technologies, Technique signaled not just an homage to its past, but a vibrant vision for the future.